That's it. I've gotten to my limit. Dad, why are you so angry? From today onward, I never want to see or hear from you again. I cannot have a stain like you on my name. So I'm a stain on your name now, aren't I? And why exactly? Because I took on a few silly tattoos. A few? Your entire body is covered in tattoos, Thomas. Do you know how irresponsible that makes you look? You look like a Loch Ness monster. Maybe you'll tattoo your eyeballs next. Actually, I was kind of considering that too. You see what I'm saying? No remorse whatsoever. You don't even feel remotely sorry for what your irresponsibility has cost me in my company. Remorse? Why? You want me to feel sorry for doing what I love. Why should I do that? You're a worthless son. You know that, right? I've lost a lot of contracts in the past few months because of you. Some of my associates think I'm the father of a hoodlum. One even said I can't handle his job if I can't handle my son. Can you imagine that? So I'm guessing you want to handle me now. Exactly. I need you out of my business and out of my life before it gets out of hand. Okay, but you remember that I was the one who helped you reel in all the contracts you currently work on, right? You lost your flair for pitch-perfect presentation years ago, Dad. You buried them all in the numerous women you brought to bed. Don't you dare talk to me like that, boy. I am your father. Are you? I thought you were disowning me just now. Get your story straight, Dad. I think it will interest you to know that I have another son too. Before you start feeling yourself so much. Billy is my well-groomed, picture-perfect son. He'll take over the company after me and do all the things you think you used to do for us. Billy will take over the company. Do you even know how stupid that sounds? How many times has Billy been in any of our trainings or meetings? Just the training, right? Billy will get his training. How hard can that be? Look at it this way. If you can actually train yourself, Dan, then you can train Billy because he actually took after you. Crazy and unstable. All right, that's enough, Thomas. This is the exact attitude I can no longer have in my house or in my company. Oh, we both know I never wanted to be involved in your company. I've always wanted to be an artist. I simply carried out my duties because I was under pressure to be the ideal heir to you. But not anymore. You do not deserve my loyalty. Especially because you're a narrow-minded person who does not accept people the way they are. You feel everybody has to fit into the mold you have created. That's not true. You know, I was proud of you in the beginning. Only because you never knew you'd have another son. You've always told me this. You kept me because you thought Billy would never come along. You planned to usurp me even from birth. Your mother abandoned you after giving birth to you. She no longer wanted to be with me, so she left. She threw you onto a busy highway, just hoping that a car would run along and crush you to shreds. That's why you have that disgusting scar on your wrist. And that should always serve as a reminder that I've been nothing but good to you. You should be grateful. You shouldn't have brought this up, Dad. You know... I took my first tattoo just to cover up that scar. Do you always have to say things that hurt me? I don't care how you see it, Thomas. You're a lot of bad luck, and I just want you out of this family. Fine. I'll leave. Thank goodness. I'll send in documents for you to sign in this regard. Documents? Yes, accepting that you're no longer a part of this family. Relinquishing the family name and all whatnot. You'll no longer have access to the house or any rights to my company. 
Is that all? Yes, and please make it quick. I need the documents returned to my desk as soon as possible. I'll do all that you've said. However, the same arrangement applies to you. I'm no longer your son. Never call, text, or contact me ever again for any reason whatsoever. I will also not be available to fix things when Billy eventually messes everything up for you. Ha ha. You wish. You could go to hell for all I care. Just make sure you never return. Never! Hi, bro. I need us to talk. Do you have a second to spare? Is that a question? You know I'll always have time for you. What's poppin'? Mr. Anderson disowned me. Mr. Anderson? Your dad? He's not my dad anymore. Whoa! I told you I sensed that coming. You shouldn't have gotten the tattoos the Express didn't want you to get. But these tattoos are me. They're art on my skin. My own personal means of self-expression. No one has the right to tell me how to feel about it. I agree. But look at it now. You've lost your place in the Anderson Empire. All because of your stubbornness. You could have at least waited until your family inherited the business before you unleashed your tattoo spree. Don't you think? In a way, I am happy things happened when they did because I never really wanted to be a part of the company in the first place. Attending board meetings, nerve-wracking brainstorming, and having to act all nice to people I genuinely hate. All that was a lot for me to handle, bro. I really could have quit at some point myself if he had not already disowned me. Mr. Anderson just made my ordeal a whole lot easier. It's the way you say Mr. Anderson. As if he was never your father. Was he though? You're very rock-headed. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Enough about that silly man already. So, what's the plan? I just need a place to crash for the night. You know, you didn't really have to text me. You could have just come straight to my place. I honestly didn't want to be a bother. You can never bother me. You're my bro. Or have you disowned me too? Huh? <laughs> you joke about everything. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just pull up at the crib. Thanks a lot, Terry. I'll be gone before you know it. You can stay as long as you'd like. I don't mind. I was hoping to get my own place soon, though. We'll discuss that when you get here. Let's start by getting you off the streets. Thank you so much, bro. You're a lifesaver. It's really nothing. The little things brothers do for each other, right? Yeah. Hey, Terry. My gee, what's good at this hour? I know it's pretty late, but I just wanted to thank you for helping me move in tonight. You're a great friend. That's all? Just because of that, you woke me up at midnight? Well, I wanted to tell you immediately, so... <sighs> it's nothing, bro. What are we friends for? The apartment looks beautiful, by the way. Right? And to think, Miss Olivia gave me the place with no rent up front and no security deposit. Isn't that a little suspicious? Hmm, kinda. But it could be a blessing in disguise as well, don't you think? Could be, but this one's a little sketchy. I was even going to ask you why she made us hot coffee and cookies just because I was moving in. Is that how she is to all her tenants? How would I know? You should, because you directed me to her. All I know is that she's nice, and that she was good to me for the duration I dated her daughter. You were with her daughter? Yeah, and she gave me a place to stay in her building when I had nowhere else to go. Oh, wow. So, you know, she can be a little clingy. 
I don't know if clingy is the best word to use, but she sat with us when we wanted to watch the games. I find that a little too pushy. You should have asked her to go away then. I didn't want to look ungrateful, you know? Yeah, I get you. Somehow, I like the attention she gave me. Ooh, Thomas! Don't tell me you... No! Quit that thought, Terry. It's not like that. It's just... For the first time, I felt a woman's touch like a mother's touch. You won't believe it, but she's called me a gazillion times to find out how I'm settling in. I now feel like we've known each other for years. Mm -hmm. I felt loved and appreciated and cared for something I did not think I'd received from anybody, giving all my tattoos and all. I understand you, bro. But for real though, you shouldn't get too comfortable so it doesn't become what it isn't meant to be. You and your landlady? Ew, creepy. Oh, she's calling me right now. What? Again? Dude, it's midnight. Do you think she might need something from you? I have no idea. I just know there's always an end to every game. I just hope it's not what I'm thinking. Me too, bro. Me too. Hey, Thomas, darling. There's something I've been eager for you to see. Take a look at this picture. What's the meaning of this? Come on, Thomas. Don't act like you're oblivious to my advances. What advances? Stop pretending, Thomas. You're a handsome young man. And I'm sure you've got some youthful spirit in you. Don't act like you don't know what this implies. I'm sorry, Miss Olivia, but you're my landlady. And I'm not comfortable with that kind of relationship. Plus, you're a lot of years older than me. I can't go down that path. I'm sorry. Come on. Does age matter? I'm offering you a lot of perks for a simple compromise. You've probably done this before with other women. So it's not that unusual. Just do it for me. And you won't have to pay rent here as long as you stay. I never said I couldn't afford the rent, ma'am. In fact, I'm sending it right now. I like you, Thomas. I really do. I don't want to cause any trouble. I'm just asking this one time. And I won't bother you again. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, that's fine. Take some time to think about it. But you'll eventually give in to my requests. Mark my words. Hello, Thomas. Miss Olivia? What brings you here this time? Nothing much. Just wanted to apologize. Apologize? For what? For my behavior earlier. I shouldn't have acted the way I did. No worries. I'm not holding it against you. But it's worth noting that many people in this complex hold you in high regard. And you wouldn't want to jeopardize that by doing anything that might come off as... Creepy. No, no. I don't usually do that. Trust me. I just... I had a few drinks last night. And when I first saw you, Thomas, I felt this inexplicable attraction. Like I'd known you forever. I know it sounds cheesy, but my initial thought was a romantic connection. That's why I was a bit too forward. Now... I realize I shouldn't have approached you that way. I've come to understand that you remind me of my son. Your son? My son, Ethan. I lost him when he was just two. I left his father out of fear for my life. But it turned out to be the biggest mistake of my life. I tried to get him back. But by the time I did, his father had already left town with him. I had to live the rest of my life with the haunting fear that I might never see my son again. When I saw you... Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't burden you with my personal stories. 
No need to apologize. We all have our share of losses in life. Me too. Never knew my mother. My father said she left us when I was three. I'm sorry to hear that. It's fine, Miss Olivia. Sometimes sharing these painful experiences with others help us cope. Would you like to share your story? It's not much of a long story. We were married for three tumultuous years, solely because his father insisted. If Christopher hadn't been married to me, he wouldn't have become the CEO of his father's company. Beyond that, they needed an heir, a third generation to take over. So, after giving birth to my son, Christopher wanted nothing to do with me. The marriage turned violent, and he attempted to harm me severely. I stayed because of my son, but one day, I reached my breaking point. Did you say Christopher? Yes, Christopher. He was brutal, wicked, just pure evil. That day, he wanted me out of his house instantly. I wasn't going to leave without my son. So he smashed a wine bottle against the wall and hurled it at me. I crouched to avoid the bottle, but then my two-year-old son walked in from nowhere. He came between the flying glass and myself, and the bottle gave him a slash across his wrist. My poor child. What? I ran away that day, but I should have stayed. My deepest regret is not bringing my child with me when I chose to escape. Later, I heard he married another woman and had a son as well. And now I don't even know whether my son is alive or dead. What did you say was the name of your ex-husband? Christopher. Christopher Anderson. Mom? What? Ethan? No way. No. My name is Thomas, not Ethan. Why did you call me mom? Because your story matches mine. And I have a cut on my wrist too. What? Can I see it please? Okay, here's a picture. You may not see it clearly because I tried to hide it with art, but it's there. He said you gave me that cut to kill me. But I don't doubt you at all. Is this your left hand? Yes, it is. My god. You are my son. Ethan. Oh, that evil man changed your name. Your real name is Ethan. Ethan Christopher Anderson. I searched for you everywhere, Ma. He told me you were dead. No. I'm alive and well, Ethan. Oh, my son. My sweet son. Please come over to my apartment this instant. I need to see you right now. Come back home, Thomas. Excuse me? Who is this? How can you not know who I am? I'm your father, boy. Ugh. Correction. I'm no longer a boy. I'm a man now. And secondly, I don't have a father. So I don't know who this is. Enough with this rubbish. I want you to come back home right now. You don't have a right to command me in that matter, Mr. Anderson. Especially not after you threw me away like trash. I blocked your number before, and I'll do it again right now because I do not want to have anything at all to do with a barbaric abuser like yourself. I would watch how you speak to me if I were you. But you're not me. And that's the amazing part. I really didn't go through the trouble of getting a new line and searching for your contact just to banter words with you. Just come home or you'll face my wrath. Face your wrath? What can you even do? I heard you're old and sickly now. If I begin to run, you cannot even chase me. Or what good are you then? So you've been keeping tabs on me. You're still a celebrity. And even though I honestly don't know why a heartless person like you should be among the elite, 
it doesn't change the fact that you are. It's easy keeping an eye on everything you do when you and Billy are always on the news for all the wrong reasons. So at least you know that the company is sinking into the ground. Not that I didn't warn you from the onset. What do you mean by that? I told you that Billy was not the best person to run the company, but you never listened. You let go of your key to generational success simply because of your narrow-minded ideas. P.S. The key was me. Okay, fine. You've won, okay? Billy was the worst choice of my life. He kept stealing money from the company's purse to give to his several girlfriends and mistresses. Meanwhile, he told me he was making investments. And because you love your son so much, you didn't care to make sure he was doing what he said he was. How crazy can you get? Just come home and fix things. We signed an agreement, didn't we, Dad? Five years ago, we agreed that I don't have any right to take any action as your son. And neither am I allowed to take up any position in your company. You also issued a police restriction order forbidding me from being found even as little as five feet away from any of your properties. I made those rules, Thomas. I can break them. I just need your help. And you will give it to me as payment for the two and a half decades you were under my care. I do not owe you anything, Mr. Anderson. Also, as a responsible citizen, I have no intention of defaulting on government-issued orders. Because unlike you, I have a lot to lose and a reputation to protect. A reputation? With your creepy tattoos and ungodly mannerisms? How much better could you have gotten in five years? I'm sure you're still cleaning floors or washing toilets or something. You should be grateful I'm giving you a second chance. I have a lot to do right now, Mr. Anderson. Please let me be. And as for coming to help you or whatnot, the answer is no. As a matter of fact, what do you say I block this number to? No, Thomas, don't do that. See, I'm sorry for all that I've done to you, really. It's just that the company is on the brink of final liquidation. It's either this or someone else who buys up my business. Something I've worked so hard for. So, has any company come to buy it up? Some guys from E&O Group. They're so strong, and they have a lot of money. If I don't do anything quickly, they'll take over everything in a snap. I can't watch that happen. But I'm too weak to do anything right now. I need your help, Thomas. Please. I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson, but I cannot be of any help to you at this moment. You're so ungrateful. I've always known you're a weakling, a failure. I've always known you would be my downfall, a disgrace to this family. Why can you not help me even after I've begged and apologized? I cannot help you because I am the CEO of ENO Group. What? I founded the company after you disowned me. And for your information, ENO is an acronym for Ethan and Olivia. Olivia? My ex-wife Olivia? Yes, I found her. And she told me the actual truth about the wicked and evil way you treated her when you were both married. You're such an opportunist and you don't even deserve to own CA Corp. Or any other company for that matter. But you said you never wanted to be a part of my company. You wanted to be an artist. Consider this my payback for treating my mother like trash all those years ago. You'll eat the dust you fed her with. You have my word. And by the way, my name is Ethan. And I'm back to rule over all that is mine. As the CEO of ENO Group, Thomas had the resources and influence to rescue CA Corp from the brink of collapse. However, he had no intention of simply bailing out his father's sinking ship with calculated precision. 
Thomas negotiated a merger between the two companies, proposing that his mother, Olivia, be appointed as co-CEO alongside him. Olivia, a brilliant businesswoman and the rightful heir to the Empire, had suffered for years at the hands of Christopher Anderson. The board members, eager to save their company, quickly rallied behind the idea. Christopher, realizing he had no other option, begrudgingly agreed to the merger. As the ink on the agreement dried, Olivia and Thomas took the helm of the company. Together, they breathed new life into CA Corp. Thomas's innovative ideas and Olivia's strategic vision revitalized the once faltering empire in a surprising turn of events. Thomas's unconventional appearance and tattoos became symbols of creativity and resilience. In the end, Christopher and Billy ran out of the company and their family home, ultimately turning the tables and returning Christopher to a life of retribution and regret. Oh, sweet revenge.